Hi everyone, welcome. Josh from the Happy Little Landscapes here. We're going to uh, show you how to paint a landscape scene on a 24 by 30 canvas. It's already been primed with uh, Bob's Liquid White, so it's wet and slick and ready to go. And in this scene, we're going to throw a little UFO in, so see if you can keep up with me. I'm going to start off with bright red. We have black, blue, uh, Prussian blue, excuse me, uh, alizarin crimson and titanium white. Probably won't use the green. Let's get a little here on both sides and get started. Just kind of blocking in some color right now and we'll blend it out later. You kind of put it wherever you want, but this is where I want mine. Throw some of that red down here, clean off your brush. And it'll eventually end up being some color in our snow. And I want the littlest bit of crimson here with some Prussian blue. We're gonna come up here, make that nice purple color. Notice I've intentionally left this area for our clouds here. Don't wanna to have too much paint on there to start with. I do want it a little bit darker up in my sky, so I'm going to take a little bit of just midnight black and just lightly add a couple little swipes, we'll call them. When we blend those out, it's going to look real nice. So we clean our brushes, liquid uh, low odor mineral spirits. I suggest you get a bucket. It's much better than the uh, the way Bob does it and kind of splashes everything around if you want to keep your place nice anyway. So we'll take our two inch brush and start to blend our color in here. Just making little X patterns. And I want to do the light color first without putting any of the dark there where I want it to be. The sky is not as blue as I'd like it to be. So I'm just going to take some Prussian blue just right on the end of the brush. And we're going to just drop in a little more blue in some areas here. Don't worry about how much time you take on your sky either. I find the longer you spend on your sky, the better your painting is going to be. You can't just throw color up there and leave it. It's got to, when you look from the side, and he's got to be nice and flat. That's how you know you blended it out, where you can't tell where one color stops and one color starts. Clean off our brush. Dip it in the paint thinner, into the bucket. Onto our little beater bucket. Keep it nice and clean, relatively dry. All right, now we're gonna take our clouds. I'm gonna go with a brand new fan brush today. Never used this fan brush before. What do we got here? Simply Simmons number four. So, for our clouds in this painting, I'm gonna get a lot of pure white, both sides of your fan brush. And then we're just going to go up and start making some shapes that a cloud would be. Just kind of drop it on there. Go down this way. Oh, picked up a little bit of red off of our, our color here in the clouds. It was an accident, but it's a happy accident. Now we've got a general cloud shape in there. Just kind of mushed onto the... And just with the tip of the one inch brush, we're just going to make little circles just barely touching the canvas, just the slightest bit. And that bit of red that we picked up in there, it's fine, leave it. This little bits of blue, we're gonna cover it all. Don't trip. Every so often I get the teeniest bit of the midnight black. Just make even lighter circles in there. 
just to get the little effect of a shadow. That's all you need is the slightest little bit. And that gives your cloud some depth. I'm gonna go back to our one inch brush, still covered in white paint. Nice and globby on there. Put a little whisper up here in the, in the edge. Just anywhere you want. Drop them in and just mush it. It doesn't have to look like anything. It can be however you want it to be. Take our old brush again, still haven't cleaned it. Just gonna use a very tip corner. I'm just gonna blend these suckers almost all the way away. These are real far clouds in the distance. You're not really gonna see. And we're gonna take our clean one inch brush. We're gonna swipe up very lightly, go across. Up, go across. You do this as many times as you want until you get your desired look that you're going for. And make sure the brush is dry. You don't want to have paint thinner on your brush. Or you'll end up making a mess. It's hard to go back and fix. There we go. We'll blend in between here. Kind of get those little lines our brush created. A little bit more depth. So, like I said, we're going to go up very lightly, come across very lightly. You can almost feel the the paint grip the brush just the littlest bit. Oh, no, I forgot to blend that one. So we're going to go in here, and blend it very gently. Leave the gaps, leave the holes, leave the dark spots, leave how it doesn't connect. The clouds don't have to be perfect. They are not a shape that is a perfect thing. Okay, so now that we've got a little bit of gray from this dark area on our brush, we're gonna clean it off. Run into the paint thinner, stir it around, off into the bucket, wipe it on a paper towel. It seems like the easiest way to do it. Nice and clean again. So we're gonna get the littlest bit of crimson here on the edge of our brush and just kind of flavor the bottom of this so lightly. So very lightly. Blend that in. Come up. The only reason we're doing that is because we're gonna put something in front of it. We're not gonna put something in front of it and just leave it. Hello. I have spectators around the house. So let's see, we're going to come in with another one, right in front there. This one's going to take a lot of paint, just kind of glob it up there. And now we want it to come down to our tree line, which in my mind is about right here. So depending on what you want, you can leave a little bit of sky in between your tree line, or you can bring the clouds all the way down if you want. The more paint you put on the canvas, the harder it's gonna be to continually add more. So I think with this cloud, we're gonna stop there. We're gonna get out our blender. Still haven't cleaned it. A Little bit of gray, a little bit of red, a little bit of white on it. And we're not really touching the cloud hard enough to kind of transfer that paint on there. You can see how we've got our cloud here. It's now cutting in front of a cloud that's in the distance there. Just by putting that little bit of black and crimson on the bottom, you can create that illusion of distance and space. I'll take a little bit of black, kind of add in our shadowy bits. You can poke it in there if you want. You can do whatever you want. Blend it out. Doesn't have to be perfect, remember. Doesn't have to be simple. Doesn't have to be the same amount of black over here as over here. You can literally do whatever you want. Kind of fluff it in the shape that you want. Had a little hair there. In the shape that you want to shape it. Come across sideways. If you did your job right and it's thin enough and blended enough, you're not going to drag all that across all the other stuff that you've already laid down. Now, what should we do over here? We got a come up with something for over here. So what if I get a little bit of blue with my clouds, just the littlest bit, and try to scoop up that blue paint that we got there, not dilute our white. 
We'll just drop in another sucker. You don't want to kill all your dark spots, though. Dark spaces are key. You cannot have dark without light. Or light without dark. So throw the black in. Throw the blue in. Give it some different hues. You can't just see the white if it's up there all on its own. So throw in some blue, man. Especially if you want it to pop from a distance. Most people these days don't give a crap enough about your art to come up and look at it up close or zoom in and see the details that you see when you paint it. So give them some color. Give them something to catch their eye. Something to look at. That'll bring... Sorry, that'll bring their eye to the things that you want them to see. All your little details and different colors and all the lovely stuff we've created. All right, so we'll come in, we're gonna blend this guy. You really don't wanna to touch these nice top edges, these crisp edges that kinda of define where our cloud is from the rest of the sky. If you can leave those in and you get that nice contrast of color, it's really nice. Work out real good for you. Once again, we're gonna fluff this cloud. Sideways until you get the look that you want. Doesn't have to look like my painting, it doesn't have to look like anything. But you'll notice as our sky, we've gotten progressively lighter as we've gone down, as the sun is setting, <clears throat> the sky is starting to get dark. We've got this nice red that's going to bounce off of our real dark tree color, which is coming up next. Now we make our trees, we're just going to pop down like this. You don't want them to all be the same size or the same height. You don't want, you know, you can have some light shine through in places. And then every so often, what we want to do is just make a little, little guy who stands out from the rest. You can actually tell that there's an evergreen tree. All these are evergreens, right? to the untrained eye. Make them nice and fluffed down at the bottom here. So you don't have a lot of light coming through. You get little areas where the light will shine through. And we're gonna continue them all along the side of this. All right, so now that we've used up all of our, our blue, we're gonna frame this so it doesn't matter if it's gonna go on the other side or not. And <clears throat> before that I before I cover up all this lovely area back here, right, these need to come down a little bit more. And then you're gonna see what happens. So we'll take one inch brush. I know that in some bits of my forest, I'm gonna have another set of trees over here, so don't worry about that. I'm just gonna take it and pull it straight sideways. And whatever comes with, just let it come with it. And you'll notice we get this shadowy effect and see how we come down and our paint keeps coming down that gives us more layers to come in front of so it looks like it's getting closer to us now Lock that up a little bit and each time we're pulling kind of down but mostly sideways and don't worry about this extra space in here it's going to turn into our snow and you see the reason i got to here <coughs> And stopped because now we can see there's this whole nother set of forest that's going to come in front of all this shaded area back there. So before it gets too dark, why don't we put a little bit of snow on our brush, just plain white snow. Need a fair amount of it to show up. Good glob of it. Alright, so now we have some shadows in our snow. And that's how you can make all these little hills and valleys and deep shadowy bits just from one flick of the brush and leave it don't make it all the same don't make it look like a cookie cutter type of thing nobody wants to see the same thing it doesn't happen in nature so don't paint it like that here okay so now that we've got our our snow banks laid out they're very thick compared to the rest of the stuff that's on the canvas and what we'll do is take our one inch brush and just at the bottom of our trees, swipe up like we did with our clouds, just the littlest bit. And I 
kind of makes them blurry in the distance. All the way, almost all the way to the top. You don't want to have your whole brush stroke come out where you don't want it. <clears throat> Maybe take a couple, take your knife, you can add in a couple little sticks and twigs that are popping out the top. Maybe the trunk of this guy is out there. There's some in between. It just makes it look more filled when uh, someone who actually is looking at it, you know, for the detail, they'll be able to see all that. <clears throat> all right, so now that we've come across, we can take the rest of this. I'm actually gonna get it a little bit more dark color on here. What do you? Six o'clock. Take some more of that dark color, a little bit of snow. So now, what I'm going to do is have another set of trees in here, and then the snow is going to go this way, so we're going to make a little path, basically. And you can almost see we've created a little pathway here. We're going to have something up in the front. We're going to have trees over here, a little path, just like that. So, <clears throat> back to our fan brush. It still has the dark color on it. I'm going to load it up full of color. Full size, nice and crisp edge. A big old tree right there. A lot of times I'll add the line just to keep me straight on the way down. And what we'll do is just with the tip of the brush, and with this one, we're going to make an upward push. That's going to give us these cool little upward branched trees. And like I said, you don't have to, they don't have to touch. The only problem you want you don't want is them to get too dang big on the way down. Something that I struggled with as a more inexperienced painter is not to let them get humongous like a pyramid, you know what I mean? So now that we've got our one, we're gonna always give them a little friend. You can add as many as you want over here, but let's put this guy back here. Upward motion of our trees. And don't worry about the spaces in between because we're going to cover it up with some uh, highlight anyway. Put some snow on. Do one more little guy. Pop it for the tree guy. And the only reason I'm giving this guy is because there's too much space over here. I needed to fill this in. So we'll give them a little bit of branch, like that. And then when it comes time to highlight it, you'll be able to see the actual trees that I'm talking about. So for this painting, we want to have our paint, our, bright, our hill kind of come out this way. And let's get a little guy, just a little. Leave a sucker right there. There we go. Now we're covered up enough. Bring him down. This is going to be shadows. And then you can even kind of just push in and it creates this illusion of grass. Right? So try it. And then when you pull it out is when it's going to look cool. Take our brush, right? And go just very lightly over it. Don't really want to pull it out too much. little shadowy bits. A little piece of grass sticking up, you know what I mean? Bring some of this down. Watch this, guys. Pull, literally pull it to the shape that you want. Shadow go as long as you want, as short as you want. 
and the gray ends up being your snow. Now we're gonna fill the rest full of this white snow here. And if you leave it nice and globby, it's gonna look like, like snow drifts that are blowing in the wind or a hill. And it just gives it this cool feel. I'm like, what will we even do since we kind of messed that up, right? Show you guys a trick. You're like, shoot, I forgot to put it back there. Clean our brush. Didn't bring our snow over far enough, right? So, we go in one direction because we can always fix this. Go back. Get some white. Okay, so now we're there. What we're gonna do is fix our little tree. color down and with the grass I like to go at a diagonal angle I mean you can do this for the whole painting trust me I've done it <clears throat> but try to stop yourself and just ever so lightly go across leave these nice little spiky bits on our edge right here you can even take them and go up like this it's gonna look like long grass right there across we got our shadowy from our trees covering our grass here shoot we can even put a little you want to do it let's do it put a little uh, put a little guy down there use some paint thinner get our little liner brush which is like rock hard from the last time I used it Apparently I don't keep track of my things. And we'll just go like this. Like that. I use this one instead. Yeah, a little bit of thinner. A little bit of paint. Come in here. Make a little. Frozen little tree branch here. Just a little guy. A couple things here and there. However, you want to do it. Your way is the right way. Clean off our little liner brush. And then for the base of this, the easiest way I found to do it. Same way we just did our grass. You kind of pop in a little bit of grass there. And just pull it out. Just like that. We'll come back in and we'll touch him up. Now, what we're going to focus on is our UFO that's going to go right here in our clouds. Okay, so for that, most of you like never painted a UFO before. I found the easiest brush to do it with is this brush from Bob Ross. We're gonna use the same bit of gray that we use for all of our trees here. We're just gonna kind of lighten it up a little bit with the white and make it a grayish, kind of spaceshipy, silvery material, right? Little this bit, and come over here, and we're gonna decide that he is gonna float. He's just gonna hover like make a shape like that almost straight across at the bottom and this is just a basic shape we're going to fill him in and we're going to make him look different who knows yours might be longer could be shorter don't want to go too big though end up 
taken up the whole painting. You gotta decide on your ship what your shape is gonna be, how dark it's gonna be, if you can see the underside, if you can't see the underside, where's the light coming from? shapes that might be difficult for you. That's got a nice point to it now. Let's come over here. This is a little bit too far out, but we're gonna do it anyway. third time now. room to come in with our white lights. Okay, we've already got the red one at the end over here. This guy a little bit brighter. This guy back there. That's looking much better. And we'll get our white. circles. Don't mix them too much, as you can already see. And that one's got to be brighter though. The white really has to stick out against this. I want it as pure as you can get it. All right, now for the fun part. Every spaceship has a good tractor beam, right? Bits. Not too many. And they get bigger as they come forward. Okay, we do a couple down this way. Not too many now. We overdo it and it's going to lose its look. Same thing, we'll just very lightly, very, very, very lightly lift up to make those bits of grass just so light. Just so lightly. Oh, that was a big bit of black. There we go. So lightly. Okay. So now, we might as well, since we're on this side and we've got some white on our brush already, just barely touching with that liquid white. And a little bit of liquid white down in here with the teeniest bit of red in it, right? Just lightly, lightly, lightly touch. Like that. Give a little bit more. Come back on this guy. Give him a little flavor. This is what's going to separate those trees from the ones behind it is having our little branches pop out here. Right, and towards the end we get darker, darker, darker down at the bottom. Don't want it to have super bright down there. <sighs> Another trick you guys can do if you get a little bit of just some blobbed up 
titanium white. You can give a little bit of highlight to the trees in the side. And then just once again, very lightly, up. Wipe the rest down here. We don't care about that spot down there. Notice we've got this whole big area here. We haven't done anything with. So what we're gonna do now is kind of fill up that area first. A little bit more dark underneath here. Yeah, I like that. Just a bit of dark in there it makes it shadowy on the bottom and the light on the top, right? You gotta be uber careful not to come out of your lines or back into your thing that we've done three times already. <clears throat> now, since we said we were going to do it just like the other painting, the other painting had a tractor beam with some white and blue beam coming from it. So, why don't we get our bit of white, I'm gonna take that and get this snip of this little blue, just the teeniest little bit. Maybe a bit more. Get it in there. And then what we're going to do is glob all that up onto our thing. Decide where our guy is going to live. And just drop in a thing. A little bit wider. You want to have it nice and globby. You don't want it to be... Uh... That looks good. Get a little bit of black in there. A little, a little bit of shadowy. Yeah, like once again, you don't want to mix it too much. You want to leave a spot for our little alien guy down here. We can pull some pure white down on top. Just like that, folks. Now we have to come back in here. We'll take a little bit of our dark color here. We're just going to go over this until it looks like we want it to look just about like that. See it's coming out of from below, below the ship there. And since we're there we might as well take just pure liquid black and get our little alien guy in here. So all I did was a little head kind of like a upside down teardrop shape little body, little legs, little weird eyes. It's literally like a stick man because he's so far in the distance that you're not going to be able to really see a lot of detail on him. The one thing you will be able to see is this pure white shine on his eyes. What you do there is you poke, you touch, and then you just, the tiniest little lift up, and that's it. Now we got these two little eyes that shouldn't be there in nature, so it's going to draw our eye to what's below. And just to hide his little stick figure body, what we'll do is pop a little bush there in front of him. And what's the easiest way we pop bushes? with our fan brush here, just like we did these little guys. I'm talking about the littlest bush. Get like the corner of the brush. Pop it just underneath him so he's, there's something, you can see there's something there. Whether it's like the aura or maybe there's dirt lifting or there's a big bush there, there's something there that we can't see behind. Just the teeniest bit of white to give it like a snow-covered bush feel. Okay, we are almost done, you guys. What I want to do with the rest of this liquid white, uh, sorry, with the titanium white that I have, these big globs, is just kind of glob in our snow here and just start to blend. We want this, we don't want these areas to touch. Remember, we're having this little kind of a path that's come down and that we're looking at here. So just glob up the rest of this white and just get it in. Get it on the canvas straight across. Pull straight across. I don't know if you guys can see it like that. 
closer we get, the more straight across we want to be with our little humps and valleys of our snow here. Okay. You can take some of this guy, pull him straight across. Allow it to pick up some can some color. And boom, now we have a little sheen of light coming down right there. So we need something in the big corner over here. Even though there's a lot to look at in this painting, I try not to be finished until every single bit is covered nearly. So what we're gonna do is clean off our one inch brush. But if you like your painting the way it is right now, that's perfectly fine. You can be done, you can do whatever you want. It is your world. You make it happen, okay? But for me, in my world, we're gonna use the last bit of our little black mess that we've created to make a, uh, almost like a, well, it could, it, could be a, it could be a tree, it could be a bush, it could be whatever you want it to be. But in mine, it's, we're gonna call it one of these just on steroids, it's a little sticky bush. So with our thing here, just kind of decide where you want your little bush to be and bring it down, man. Like that, maybe we'll have one up here. And all these thicker bits are going to get thinner with our liner brush, so don't worry about that. I come down, maybe this one comes across here, down into our thing. Then we do a little guy over here. All right? Now, Let's get a little bit of white, try to come across, see if we can highlight this just a bit. Leave some of the dark, but give that white and dark something to look at over here where they kind of touch against the background. And that way we'll be able to tell that there's a branch there and not just all of a sudden it pops up out of the side. Uh, and it's frozen winter, so we want some white on our branches, right? This big thing down here, and then you don't have to worry about what's down here. We're going to blot in some bush. <laughs> so, we can clean off this brush. I don't think we're going to need it anymore. We're nearly done with our painting extravaganza, which I'll probably have to edit down because it's been way too long and way too many attempts at this little sucker right here. So, again, every time I look at this stupid thing, there's always something. There we go. That's better. In my mind, you wouldn't see where the beam came out if the ship was right there, so you gotta do it. In your mind, if your ship looks different, you gotta paint the bottom how it would you would really see it. So, sometimes I have to hold my palette up and I'll hold it like this and go, okay, if I want to show one from the bottom, that's what my shape has to look like. If I want to show one from the top, my shape's got to look like this, so it's flying in at us. I want to show one, you know, you can't show too much top and too much bottom, or you're going to end up with this acorn looking shape thing. So now what we'll do is, you know what? I'm going to open a brand new line brush today. We want something kind of thick, about like this. Something like that. Kind of like the one Bob Ross used. I beat that one to death and uh, no longer can use it anymore. So, what we'll do, we'll get a little bit of paint thinner right in here with all of our dark and our dark gray and black. You really want a lot of paint thinner. You want this to be really runny. Right? It'll end up running off of my palette if I hold it the wrong way. And then we'll come back up here and we'll continue our branches along and make them nice and thin with sharp edges. And that way, there we go. With this paint thinner, it will slide over the thicker paint that's in the back. And uh, without it, it's definitely difficult to achieve the look we're going for. You just gotta take a step back and you, know, you can't just go in there. A lot of times I'll come in and just let her rip and think of it as I go along. But a painting like this, you gotta have an idea about what you wanna do, 
where you want stuff to be, what you want to fill up, you know, what's going to be behind your your trees or your bushes and you know, what do you want your bush to look like? Do you want it to be all scraggly like mine? Do you want it to be nice and thick with maybe a bunch of thick snowy covered uh, bushes down the bottom of it? Look, we're running out of paint there. You can always tell when it starts to get heavy that we're running out of paint there. Now you decide what you want it to be, but a lot of times it's hard to, uh, to kind of go in blind and do it. You just might not end up liking what you came up with. For me, I struggle with that. If I don't really have an idea of what I want to do, I will be able to tell by the time I get done, like, oh, I didn't know what I was doing here, I didn't, didn't know where to go, I didn't know what to put where. So now with some of the rest of this dark color, we can come in here and start adding like some bark to our tree. Get the paint thinner still on there, so it'll lay on top of this white. Because you only really want a little bit of white there, just to have you, just to provide some, some, some kind of back, you know, a breakup. So it's not all black against the, you know, or you know, dark blue against the uh, background color. And you don't want it to be too white down here. You want it to be nice and dark. The closer we come to the bottom, the darker our color should get on everything. So get some of that globbed up black that we've been using and just make your own little, your own little uh, bark. It's not hard. You just, you literally make a mess. So all you gotta do is make a mess. That's what I tell people when I'm painting live. There's nothing to it. You just gotta make a mess and hope it looks like a, you know, the look you're trying to achieve. So just like that, we have our highlighted little bush in the front. You know what we're gonna do? We're gonna put a bit of black right in between here just to break up that there's two different branches right there. We've got a branch behind, we've got a branch in front, this branch is going off to the side, and this is the most forefront branch. It's kind of popping out towards us, so we'll give it a little bit of a curl. Like that. And don't go too crazy with your... It's very easy to uh, just get way too many of these little, little swips in there. It starts feeling good, you do too many of them, and then your whole branch is covered with these things and you don't know what to do. You want to be able to sort of see through it. So now that we've got our branches laid in, we've got them highlight, uh, high lit with titanium white along with our mountain mixture of dark black and blue and, and uh, alizarin crimson, a little bit of the red. So now that we've got all that done, what's the best way to pop in some color down here, guys? We use our fan brush and again we go at an upward motion. So you're gonna push in, and it's gonna bend like this. See what I mean? I don't know if you can see that or not. But it's gonna bend almost, so if you had enough, uh, a little amount of pressure, it would flip up. We don't want it to flip, we just want it to bend up. Like that, and that'll give us these awesome little grassy bits that we couldn't create on our own if you tried with a, a normal brush. What I like to do also is get a little bit of that red that we had left and throw it in there and it'll just give you this kind of purpley-ish shadowy grass, right? And then what we'll do, get our little last bit of liquid white, Come pop this on. It's got our little grass pad, sort of like this guy over here, which we missed. And we'll take that, kind of pull it out don't really need to do much with that because it's at the very bottom of the canvas. But what would look cool is if it had a few little sticks and twigs growing out of it, if you know what I mean. So our last little bit of, of uh, paint thinner onto our dark here. And we're just gonna do a little flips. Almost just grab the color that's underneath and just pull it up, a little flip. And you'll be able to tell when your uh, stick starts getting too dry because you'll it'll lose its dark color and you'll feel it grip more on the canvas which isn't good. Now we'll get that, we'll put a couple in here to show some depth so that they're not just on the outside. 
Yeah, I think we got ourselves a completed painting. Oh, you know what? We didn't sign the dang thing. Now, for my family, my kind of uh, signature is the, it's a common thing, you've probably seen it a lot, are those little V-shaped birds, right? So, in order to get our birds, get a lot of paint thinner, very wet on your thing, and then just kind of out of the way, we'll put our little guy Be very careful because you don't want your, now that you got your painting fully finished and now you have to sign it, you don't want your hand to slip. This is not the time for you to be slippy, right, or shaky or anything else. And if you do, you feel like you're shaking too much, take a break. Go out, go have a cigarette, go get, a, uh, get something to drink. Just take a break, get away from it because the last thing you want to do is have it completed like we are now and then in the process of signing it with your own you know sort of special way you go and mess it up i've done it and then you know you only ever look at that so if you're shaky stay away go take a break if not we'll continue i don't want all my birds to be the same kind of v you know what i mean have one a little bit deeper have one kind of spread out a little bit it's myself my wife and then our little daughter, who's not so little anymore, she's getting older, she belongs here, and I've always done her as a very um, closed in bee, like she's in the middle of a big flap, she's about to take off and go, go do her life, so. Okay, so for the bottom, I don't know if you guys can still see me or not, but I've gotta sign my initials on this bad boy, so. All right, so I hope you guys like it. I hope you really try this one. It's not a difficult one. Um, you know, you might have to try a few times to get your UFO the shape that you want it to be. And in my mind, I didn't want it to be as tall, but you know, the more you work at it, the bigger you get. So we're just gonna let it be now for the rest. Like that, go out here. And with that, I think we gotta finish painting, guys. I mean, I could sit here all night and mess with this, but I really wanna go eat some food. So, we're gonna clean off the brushes. Um, as I'm doing that, as it is super up close, I don't even know if you can see my face or not. But uh, as I'm cleaning off the brushes, I wanna thank you guys for tuning in to my uh, show here, I guess. I guess you could call it a show. Um, I, I'm really interested to see if you um, can can recreate what I did. Um, this is an original painted by me. I had the idea given to me by my father-in-law who said uh, you should probably paint a UFO. I said I don't think I can do that and it turns out uh, you can. You really can. So anybody can paint. You just got to have the right tools and a little bit of help uh, with knowledge. That's all. So what we'll do is we'll finish cleaning up here. Uh, like I said, I um, want to thank you guys this Friday coming up. I have a live painting event at Ashiana North Indian Cuisine, a great little Indian re uh, Indian food restaurant. If you like Indian food, come and check me out next Friday. Uh, great food, and you'll basically get a live version of what we did just here. I'll have my gallery f available and displayed and on sale, uh, so come out and check me out. Besides that, I want to thank you guys for watching, and if you do try this painting, send me a picture. Uh, happy Little Landscapes on Instagram, um, at Happy Landscape Art on Facebook, on Etsy also. Uh, I've got links all over all my pages that'll reconnect you to the other pages. So find me and um, send me a photo. I'd love to see what you came up with and see if we're on the right page here. Uh, besides that, you guys have a great day and uh, we'll see you on the next one.